Willie D Live. It's Willie D, y'all. Back with another episode of information and instructions to help you navigate through this wild, crazy, beautiful world. In the studio, Mr. Burklett, hey. a.k.a. Lil Troy is in hey. the building, people. Hey, Mr. Willie. Hey, D. Hey, hey, How hey. you doing, sir? What's up, man? I'm glad you said D at the end, because, you know, my, my aunt, Used to mess with this dude named Mr. Willie. And I always, <laughs> when I hear Mr. Willie, I think of old man. Yeah, that's like an old man. <laughs> Everybody that D. know Mr. Willie. But well, you put that D on the end of it, it's like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay, I'm with it. I'm with well, that. How you doing, man? Man, I've been blessed, man. I ain't gonna sit there and book. I'm feeling blessed, feeling great. Got my good health, my strength, my body, my soul, my spiritual. I can't ask for no more too much, man, right now. Yeah, I be seeing you out there, man. You got your trucking business going on. Yeah. How many trucks you got now? I got two. I yeah. got two trucks, you know what I'm saying? And just trying to do a different do something different in life, you know what I'm saying? I accomplished something and um I got now I'm trying to accomplish something else right now. Yeah, man, you have owned a number of businesses. You got yeah. a trucking company now, but you used to have, I don't know if you still have it, but the bell bonding business. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> you, you know, you got the record company. Yeah. You own clubs. What other kind of business ventures have you been beeper, involved in? I had the beeper service. Uh, uh, as you may know, I had a, 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 a valet parking service back in the day. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, I had a valet parking service. Everybody used to come in, uh, come to the World Champion Club and stuff, and I, I was the valet parker out there, but it was my company. Right. So I had people parking cars. I parked cars, too. That's that big club that was out on the uh, what, east side, east side like, yeah. I-10, 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 yeah. I-10, I had that 45. one. I had one there and yeah. the one that on, on 16 by Astroworld over there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's what you was doing out there. I know you was out there getting some money because yeah. you was out there too much. And you stay <laughs> around money, you know. Look yeah. like money, smell like money. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Then I saw I got a another transportation business right now. I just started. I got a wheelchair business where I take all the dies of patients and stuff, elderly people back and forth to the doctor. Well, T2 is running that business right there for me right now. So that's wheelchair and transportation. Yeah, I got two 18 wheelers and two wheelchair vans. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Man, what is that? What is your business philosophy? Like, is there a certain thing that you do that you apply to all businesses? Man, I just try to stay focused on what I believe in, not don't let nobody else be my dream killer, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And because um, nobody believe in the dream that you have or God gave you this dream, so you have to fulfill that. You can't just let somebody else, you tell them something, like I'm telling you my story, telling you, and you kill it. God didn't give you that plan. He didn't open mm-hmm. your, he didn't have you to dream about that. He had me to dream about that. Right. So he gave me a little more information that I might be saying to you to show you how this plan going to work. So... Right. I have to follow that, and that's what I do. On everything I do, I follow what I believe in. I don't let nobody else dictate what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna do it. I just do me. Period. On every business plan I do, and a lot of times, will I don't be knowing nothing about the business. When I started eighteen wheeler business, money. I started eighteen wheeler <laughs> business. I ain't know nothing about eighteen wheeler business. I just know I wanted to go. I went to school, got my my CDL license, bought me a truck. I want to drive, so I start reading, start looking on the internet. Start calling people I knew that was doing the business, asking them certain questions, if I could formulate me a plan to benefit me. And that's what I've done. There's a lot of people that own trucking companies, but there are not a lot of people who are really making the big money trucking. They make a decent living, Mm -hmm. right? But I'm talking about the big money. What's one of the biggest mistakes that people who own trucking companies make? Some of them that now, I, what I learned, if you never drove a truck and you just buying trucks and putting somebody else in them, because you don't know what That's to expect. Mistake. Because if they go down, you go down. Yeah, if but they get sick, they call in sick, you can't make no you money. You can't make no money because you can't drive yourself. You don't have no knowledge of what they're doing on the road because you've never been on the road before. You don't know nothing about the breakdown, how to solve a breakdown, how to fix a breakdown, or who to call because you just had some money and you just bought you a truck and put your homeboy in it because he got a CDL license. Uh, then the next thing you know, you ain't do the background check on your homeboy. He got a, he got a dirty UA on, on 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 his license before he done had a wreck and all that. Your insurance high, so you got to really be paying attention when you get in this trucking business, right? It, it's a whole lot. It costs a whole lot. Mm-hmm. I done spent a whole lot of money. What kind of money cost to start? I tell everybody, man, if you finna start your own company and buy your truck, 
put a have about a hundred to the side. A good eight five hundred because when you're not making no money, you still gotta pay your bills. I ain't saying that whole hundred going on trucks, going into the trucking business, but you gotta have survival money. You see what I'm saying? You gotta be able to pay this insurance. You gotta be able to pay all, all, all the tags, the tolls, and the, the the plates, and if the your 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 driver uh, uh, unexpected breakdown, you gotta be able to pay for all this stuff. The twenty two nineties, you know, it's so many different things you gotta pay for, and it just hits you in the head, bam, bam, bam. You gotta just stay focused and keep paying it, whether you're making some money or not. I I tell you this, I had a breakdown right uh, out of town. One of my drivers did. I had a load on my back for about, I think it was like $4,600 to go deliver. We broke down for a whole week. My truck did. I had to get a tow truck. It was $2,200 to pull the, pull the truck to the to the shop. It, I paid him a weekly salary because it took him a whole week to pay to fix the truck. I put him in a hotel, and I fed him for the whole week. It cost me $9,200 for a week to fix this truck, and I was only making $4,600 for the load. Wow. Man, let's take it back. Let's go all the way back, man, because I know people are very, very anxious to hear what you have to say about this. The South Side. You're on the South Side. You're coming up. You're making your bones. You meet this guy named DJ Action. Did, yeah. Did, did Brad call himself DJ Action at the time? Yeah. Or he was just... That was, he was Action at the time. He was DJ Action. This is when you met him. Yeah. He was D- calling himself Action. Action. Right. You meet this guy. He has a dream to become a rapper. And you say, you know... I think I like this dude. He got something. I want to invest in him. So take us from there. What happens? Man, I had met Bruce Rhodes and uh, 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 Beto. Me and Beto, I really started. Me and Beto used to hustle. Beto was staying with face. Okay. Me and Beto, you know, you go out of town on anybody block, anybody corner, just starts hustling and doing what we doing back then. You know what I'm saying? And Beto telling me he got this guy that be rapping. He know I was, you know, I came from a musical background, family with my mom, my dad, and played. I played in the bands and stuff. So he said, "Man, I got this guy be rapping. Man, you need to hear." So he, he got got me over there. I listened to him. I said, "It's all good. All right, we can do something, man. I'm gonna go get some studio time and make a record up, you know." But at the time, what Face was talking about, it wasn't talking about what I was doing. I'm in the streets. I'm in the hustling, putting it down, getting getting this money. So I had him come hang out with me for a while and stuff. And he started seeing what me and my other brother then was doing down in South Park Village. We are just, you know, on the corners. He made a record up. I, we came with let Bruce producer him and Crazy C, Def Jam been- Blaster, all of them with me. Crazy C was with you at the beginning? Is that how Crazy C made his way to rap a lot? Yep. So what was the first song? That, I started Small Time, Dope him? Gang, Cocaine. That's the first Pushing song. Pushing Rocks on the Block, and never broke, man. Right. Yeah, they all hipped out with that. <laughs> yeah, Crazy C, Def Jam Blaster, yeah. Bruce Rose. Crazy and I C. did not know Def Jam Blaster was producing back then. Yeah. He used to produce 3-2. Rest in peace, 3-2. Three, 3-2 two. Three, two wow. and Def Jam Blaster was a group together from Willow Ridge. Wow. And they was with me. Wow. Bro, you just dropped some hip-hop history. <laughs> yeah, all them got with me from the South Side, man. Yeah. So everybody got behind Brad and said, this is going to be the first guy. Did you yeah. have any other rappers at the time? I know you. at one point you had uh, Mass 187, which yeah, I want to get to that. that. Yeah, that's later. Yeah. I had Romeo Poet back then. You had Romeo? <laughs> Come on, man. You've been holding out on me, man. I didn't know you had Romeo. I had all these guys, man. and uh, Right down Scott and Little, you where I used to sell all, all the beepers from. Yeah. All of them used to be right there rapping every day, coming from school and stuff, and coming up there hanging out with me and making music up. Right. I used to take them all on the road, go do shows and everything back then. So, but when you, so obviously, because you let Brad get away, you didn't realize how, you didn't realize his true potential. Yeah. You, you realized that he could rap, but you, you, you didn't know that he had but what he anybody had. can rap. It's the person behind it that, that's push it to make it more than what it is sometimes. Because we knew Face can rap. I thought 3-2 was better than Face back at, at the time. Mm-hmm. But I did. I still put 
face out first, but I think in T two music was sounding better to me than you mean three two. Than a three two Mr. Three Two music sound better than face music. But face rapped about this gangster stuff. He lived in my life. He was talking about it. So that's what I put out first. Cause mm-hmm. I can go out and, and take this and take the people around around the hood that know me from the streets and they'll they'll appreciate this more than what three two music was. Three two music was gonna be more of the future. But face was right now the life that we were living, New Jack City type life. Lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's why we put that song out like that. Yeah. So then, well, I remember when the first time I heard that damn song, I was like, this motherfucker jamming. And it was jamming already, boy, but when Reddy Red got Reddy a hold Red, to it. Oh, man. Oh, he took it to man. another level. R.I.P. Reddy Red. He took it to another level. Man, Red took that thing, man. It was like, whoa. Yeah. Do you know we used to perform that song, especially in Memphis? But when we would perform that song, we'd have to perform it last because people had a penchant for tearing up the club. <laughs> and, and, but once we saw what was going on, we got a little sharper with doing the song. We knew that this was the biggest song at the time we had. So mm-hmm. we need to sing this song. We got to be able to perform this song, but we don't want people tearing up the club and fighting, right? Yeah. So we started like ha- we start having a little speech before we would perform the song. <laughs> what y'all say? So I'd be like, yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. So this next song we're about to do, <laughs> we really want to sing it for y'all. We really want to perform this song for y'all, but. We need y'all to act like y'all got some sense, man. <laughs> this is a song that we know y'all love, but we don't want y'all to be fighting. We don't want y'all to tap nothing, because if y'all do, we're going to have to stop the song, and then y'all going to mess it up for everybody. So we need y'all to have some fun. Let's have some fun. We want everybody to leave just like you came in one piece. Yeah. And after we started putting that little, injecting that little speech in there, Everything was okay. Everything we could good, perform yeah. the song, and people would act like they had some sense, and people would just go crazy. But that that gangster walk in what? Memphis when what? that sound came on, what? man, the people be jumping all on, <laughs> and jumping up on the table. I mean, they, they stepping on, stepping on the table, dancing, dancing, take a step on the table, and not missing a stride, and still, you know, yeah. doing their thing like just. And they had their own groove. I was like, whoa, man, this mm-hmm. is something special. And I, I'm really surprised that the gang, Gangster Walk did not become as big as perhaps the, the Crip Walk, because yeah. that Gangster Walk, walk was yeah. very popular. It was back then. Somebody need to bring it back. Mm. I can't do it. I, I can't, can't do it. Neither. Somebody, uh, one of y'all Memphis. <laughs> Memphis, y'all come on, bring that back, Memphis, man. man. Y'all come on back with the gangster walk, man. That gangster walk was something else, man. Yeah. And you can still see them doing it when you go to um, uh, Memphis. You know, you can still go to some spots and see people doing it. You know, I ain't gonna, I'm going to tell you straight up one day, right? I was, we, y'all did a show here, right? Mm-hmm. I was there, and y'all performed a song. I like that bitch jamming, man. They did that. They took what I did, enhanced it. I ain't really mad. It's cool. Because at the time, music wasn't no big deal to me at the time. It was like, right. I'm just doing this here, stretching the itch. That's what I was doing music for, stretching the itch, had some money, put these guys out. If it makes some, make some. If it don't, oh, well. Kind of like a hobby to you. That's what I, everything I do would be more, more like some uh, itch I want to stretch. Uh-huh. That's what, every business I do would be an itch I want to stretch. I'm always getting, start some, move to something else, start some, move something else. That's just what I do. Uh, my mind just can't stay still on one certain thing too long. I get, uh, it, get it don't be interested in me no more. Mm-hmm. But when I heard y'all do that song, we like, I ain't gonna lie, man. I gotta tell the truth, man. I was looking like, them niggas did that motherfucking <laughs> song. <laughs> now, now, what kind of uh, what kind of work ethic did Brad have back then? He just used to freestyle. That's all. He he yeah. didn't we were just write nothing down. We didn't never get the chance to record no no bunch of songs, man. Face. We recorded yeah. like two or three songs. That was it. And most of the songs he had was almost like a freestyle. He wrote some pieces down, piece of paper, and have them strip over here, a, piece, a, a line over here, a line over there, and stuff like that. And we just always just just freestyle and just play music and stuff at the time. So when you heard those uh, few, so after y'all did those few songs. Uh, Pretty much, you know, Jay heard about it, got wind of it, and yeah. came to check it out or whatever, and yeah. you, and asked you about, you know, yeah. acquiring his services, yeah. and you were like, "Go ahead." Yeah, Jay came to me and told me biggest day, say, "Man, that boy uh, Scarface, man, I like that song, man. I'm gonna make that him the new ghetto boy," and uh, 
After I get everything situated, man, whatever you need, I got you. You know what I'm saying? I say, shit, Jake, you go to have it, man. I'm making so much money in the streets one right now. I'm cool, you know? But if I ever need something, I'll holler at you. And it was like a mutual thing. They just took, he, he, Brad just went with him. It, it wasn't like he came over there and this and that. No, he came over there like 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 he is now to me. It's the same Jay to me that I know him from back in the day. We ain't had no issue. So so when Jay came over there and asked you about Brad, because you didn't see the value, you was like, you ain't even think about paperwork or nothing. You, mm -mm. you ain't asked for no money, nothing, nothing. nothing. No, mm -mm. Let, let me get my money back that I put in or nothing. Nothing. I ain't worried about none of it. At but what point did you become worried about it? <laughs> after he sued you... me. I never worried about it, Willie. Oh, after who sued? Scarface sued me. Oh, okay. I ain't never worried. I never, I never worried about the money, man, because money, I have been blessed all my life to be able to get some money. So that didn't bother me. They made, they did what they done, and they helped solidify rap, gangster rap here in Houston when they did that. So I always look at myself, I was a part of that. Mm-hmm. See, I was a part of it to get that started, to make that happen, because Jay would have never heard about Face if I wouldn't have, if I wouldn't have put my time into Face, my money into Face, and start pushing it around, selling selling cassette tapes for five dollars and uh, one song on it and wax for five and ten dollars. He would never heard of it. Steve Funye would have never heard of it, and Steve Funye would never went took it to Jay if it wouldn't have been for what I was doing. Steve Funye took it to Jay. <laughs> Man, 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 you 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 over there holding the the, the history Pandora box, man. Wow. And they be wanting to like omit me out of history around H Town. Shouts out to <laughs> Steve Funny. You what up, Steve? They can't do that though, Troy. Yeah, they try. Can't nobody do that. They can't try. Can't nobody do that. You did that, man. I think Wanna Be a Baller is like probably the, was one of the biggest singles to ever come out of Houston. Yeah. Probably since. Uh, mind playing tricks it, or it, we, up there, we right there together yeah. So we, we in the same We're on the same boat You can drive the boat One door uh, going I drive the boat Coming back So it's like yeah. We right there together That's crazy man Like like No you, you cannot Omit Lil Troy From the history books Not just in Houston But in, in Rap period Because yeah. you did numbers Yeah You did numbers Well uh, That first That first <laughs> album uh, sitting fat down south, oh, yeah. two million copies, right? Yeah. Two million plus copies, mm -hmm. and then plus. you get, you drop back the ball. In. Yeah, it did. I didn't do that well. Yeah, yeah. And that came out the same day the World Trade, Trade Center got hit. Yeah, well, everybody took a hit. Yeah, on everybody that took one. A hit. I, so. I had a single that was my yeah. dear God song was, yeah. was was in the mix at that time. And you know when you in the heavy rotation in the mix, you you, you go. The next step is to add. Add you to the rotation, yeah. and I was right there on the cusp, man. And they stopped all ads, ads. All and it killed it. my song. Boy, it I was did. hot. Boy, it did me like that. Boy, I needed that song. Boy, I needed. It. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know how hard it is to get some ad play around Watch. here. Yeah, right. man. Yeah, yeah but they be uh, mid me, but I can say this here though. I think it's less than forty people in the world out of all entertainers right now. I'm in that category that's got over a hundred million views on YouTube. Yeah, 100 million views for Want to Be a Baller. Yeah. yeah, I'm at 102 million views right now Yeah, on Want to Be a Baller. 100, over 100 million views. 100 million. Yeah. We didn't say a million now. We said 100 million. Did you do anything special to celebrate? No, I hadn't. You didn't? No, I ain't celebrate. You should do a 100 million views party. Yeah, I should. But uh, I, I mean, it's like I just take the excitement that it come from and just say, Thank God, I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? You made you fulfill something that I tried to do and I accomplished that. Yeah. I, I you know, I know a lot of people say I need to celebrate, take it out and do something with it, let people know for they can really know what, what I've done. But when I go in my house and I see my kids, I see the plaques on the wall, I see my bank account, I I'll be happy with them myself. And you know, you know what? That's cool, but I feel like if you live to see it and somebody tells your story. That you're gonna be pissed. No, you, you, I think you should tell your own story. I know, but it's on. You my, should tell your own story. My Troy. son, he on my ass. Everybody and, around and, my circle on my on on me uh, on me about telling my own story. But you know who I told you I want to tell my story? Oh, my grandson, Troy the Third. 
I want him to tell the story of, of uh, collect all the footage, data, everything about me, and he do it from his standpoint of watching and knowing, learning about his ground his, his G pop. Well, you got to do it before somebody try to try to uh, do it without you know do it unauthorized. Mm. You know, because they can still do it. They don't need your permission to do a story about you. Yeah, they can do an unauthorized story, and, and many people would take that story as, as that's what it the is gospel. the gospel. Yeah, yeah. Unless so, it come for me, then yeah, that's so, all it. Yeah, so mm. you know, like I don't think about that. What they call you? You always give me some good advice. Every yeah. time, every time I talk to you, you always tell me some real stuff. So I might have to think about that. Yeah, think about it, man. You know, like, I mean, who who better to tell the story than you? A lot of stuff is going to be left out. Like, if I had, just knowing what I know about you, I think I could tell a decent story. Yeah. But I just learned some new stuff right in the then. last 10 minutes or so just sitting here with you that I didn't know. Yeah. Now, that's in your head. That's what you know. That's Because mm-hmm. it's your story. Yeah. Nobody knows your story better than you do. And you can take those individuals that you just mentioned in, in the story, and they don't know the other players who were involved yeah. in your story. You see? Yeah. So you, you, you know what I'm saying? Now. Can't nobody to... tell that story better than you can tell it. And, and Hey, 50, where you at? I got a story to tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I think, but you know what? At the same time, you know, you 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 got a boss type mentality. So you know, I know if it, if you put your mind to it, I think you you mess around. With it. Yeah, man. Uh, well, uh, want to be baller movie. In, in theaters, uh, on on Roku, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? On Netflix, yeah. Yeah, you, you'll make something happen. I mean, let's talk about T2, man. Your son, you know, T2 was like supposed to be next in charge. Yeah, you know, God you damn. had him set up real nice, man. man. You know, like right after you drop your stuff, and man, you know, you was, he was hot, Willie. You know, you had T2 position real he was hot. Good, he was hot to take it to the next level to take short top, stop records to the next level. He was hot. And he what happened? J- he went to jail, man. They went. He did a aggravated uh, robbery, man. Called a case, man. And right at the midst, of, I'm negotiating with Universal, Sony, all the other record companies. I'm talking to them and stuff about T2. They calling me, asking me, you know, this stuff. Keeping, they got their eye on him. Mm-hmm. And when I went to Universal to get the deal with Universal, what they offered me, I say, hey, Monty, this ain't gonna get it right here, Monty. I don't put too much work in my son. He said, Troy, I know what you want. You go out to make it a little more harder. I write. I give you everything you want on your son. I know. I know what you want, cause they were just trying to get me to do management. I said, no, I'm getting points and everything. And you know, by me knowing how the point system worked, my son asked me, Dad, why we ain't sign with Universal? I said, Son, I'm gonna be honest with you. If I'd have signed you with Universal right now, and you'd have sold a million records, you'd be like, Where the money at? Cause the, the deal they were finna give you wouldn't have been no money. Mm-hmm. If you sold records, right. it looked good you on Universal, but by me knowing how this money worked, I couldn't let you sign with them like that. <laughs> so let's you just... know how the money worked, boy. <laughs> you want to see? You know how you, the money worked. Really, that's it. You want to see? Yeah, I saw, I saw one of those royalty checks. <laughs> I'm talking about as recently as a couple of years ago. I mean, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> you want to see one from last week? Or last yeah, let me see one of them. Let me see one of them. Let me put it up for you in a minute. You, you don't want to see all this shit again. I'm going to stop, stop playing with you, Willie. They're going to stop playing with me, too. <laughs> Let Let Troy is still getting that money. Yeah, you want to be a baller, man. Sitting fat down south. Shit, I'm, uh, we got a thing going on with Universal right now that um, they put out, you know, streaming, right? We didn't have no deal on stream. How y'all just come up with that number and pay me that money? Mm-hmm. That ain't right. So that, what'd you do about it? Shit, I'm, 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 I'm in their ass about it. That's what I did about it. I'm in their ass about it. Show me in the contract. Here go my contract right here. Show me in this thing and say you're going to pay me 0.001% of a penny. I would have never signed that deal if you told me you're going to pay me with 0.001% of a penny. Mm-hmm. I would have never signed that. My lawyer would never let me sign that. So right now, we're negotiating. Well, they, these they, damn labels need to be brought to the firing squad they, for these deals that they got out here today. That's crazy, though, how they can just pay us that little bit of money, man. I mean, come on now. That ain't right. Mm, that ain't right. But they they doing it. They done did it. Now it's up to us right now. First of all, I'll show you this, this, this royalty thing. Look how many listeners I get in on, on, on Spotify. That's 900 some thousand listeners a month on Spotify. Nice. Uh-huh. <laughs> and that's off what that's just the one wanna be a baller. baller, just that one yeah, song. That, that was January. I got one from as of last month. It's nine hundred and something it's more than that from last month. 
Then I'm going to pull up the, yeah, yeah, uh, what you want to see. The big dog numbers. Have you wrote, written a book yet? Nah. You know you got to write the book. You got to write Want to Be a Baller. The yeah. Want to Be a Baller book. Or How to Be a Baller. That how would be, be dope. Baller. The you status know, pe- of a people baller. like people like how to books, right? Yeah. So how to be a baller? Status. Somebody, you better hear up and do it because somebody gonna hear that name. They gonna try to run out there and go do it. But if it ain't came from me, man, it ain't. It, it ain't, ain't gonna be it high. Ain't gonna yeah, be it high. ain't you gonna, gonna be as high. Like, 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 like we always say, it's the person that's putting it out, who's doing it, that really makes the what it come from. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. It's the person that's behind it all the time. Yeah. yeah it's good. Yeah. It'll, it'll have. Uh, where it goes in with a certain level of credibility. Yep. Yeah. Coming like you say, if I if I say it, then they'd be like, Oh yeah, let's try said that. Yeah. What what is going on with T two now? Is he back in the business or what? Well, he's still playing around with the business a little bit. Um but not not like he mainly doing the transportation business. All the people, the the clients, the customers, they call him. The patients call him. He schedule their appointments. He go pick them up, or he has somebody in another van to take to drop the people off, pick them up, take them back home. You know, roll them in their wheelchair. T two go in the house, even help people people put on their clothes and stuff. If they're not ready when they get there, he will go in the house, help them put their clothes on, get them situated and everything. What was your reaction? How did you feel emotionally? when you heard T2 got knocked for a robbery. Your son, who came from means, you went out here and you had been in the streets, you hustled to, 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 you know, to create a better life for him, to set him up, and where he, can, he don't have to do some of the things that you had to do. And then you turn around here about your son. <laughs> I was hurt. It's caught up in a robbery. I was hurt, man. It didn't, I, I was hurt. I'm like, nah, he, he ain't do that. that, that, ain't, that y'all ain't going to tell me that. Mm-hmm. He, he he didn't do that. Nah, he ain't just robbed that stuff. Nah, we got we got money. We we doing too well. We doing shows and got shit happening too much for him to say he just robbed something. Ooh. I was hurt, and he was like, "Dad, I'm sorry, man. Uh, I'm a, I'm gonna make it up to you. One day I'm gonna make it up to you, cause he know I had. I'm gonna show you one recent than that. You know, is this like, this is this the uh, quarterly payment? Yeah, that's a quarterly. That's a nice lick, bro. Yeah. That's a nice lick with numbers like that. You ain't really got to do nothing else. Mm. I get bored. Yeah. I get bored. Ooh, yeah. man. So he always say he going to make it up to me. Yeah. So. <laughs> so right now. Damn, he, he those t- some nice numbers. <laughs> <man. laughs> Shit. Are you going to sell your publishing? Hell no. <laughs> well, I'm going to say that. No, that's the thing. I know they've been hitting you they, up. Oh, they always calling me about yeah. trying to buy my they publishing. They trying to buy that publishing, man. They what? trying to get everybody publishing. Yeah. Mm-mm, I ain't gonna go down the line. When something happened to me, it's gonna keep on going. Yeah. I'm gonna be like the Beatles one day. Yeah, have that shit. But you're gonna have to put it put a clause in a trust or something that trust. they can't sell they that. Can't sell. Uh, yeah. the, the kids can't sell the royalties mm-hmm. away. Yeah, I mean, we already were yeah, talking about it. They can't sell the publishing. I'm yeah. almost close to owning all everything back 100%. Yeah. You know, you got 30 years, to, it, it come back. Yeah. You gotta start following like in 28 years. Yeah. So, so, so. Follow through on 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 your uh, response to T two getting knocked. Well, when when he got knocked, they came. We was in the studio, right? And they called. Hey, they came like, hey 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 hey, boss man. I say what's up? He said, man, T two in jail. I said, shit. Well, somebody he got tickets. Somebody go pay his tickets or something. Get him out of jail. Nah, boss man. Uh, they got him. I said, for what? Man, we was we robbed the store and he got caught. You mean y'all robbed the stove? Tell me, hold on. What you mean you robbed the fucking stove? Only way you, he said, like a seven eleven or something. I said, man, only reason you gonna tell me he robbed the fucking seven eleven stove if y'all knew that man was bringing work in that stove, transporting a bunch of money. You had an inside lick, an inside job to go get some money. Y'all did not rob that stove for the money that's in that damn stove. You can't tell me that. I'm not gonna hear that. I don't hear no shit that y'all robbed just to be robbing the damn stove. Now, if y'all robbed because you had inside knowledge that they had a bunch of money in there, finna transport it, some work in there or something, I'm cool with that. So, to me, he, he hurt me because he used his stripe up for nothing. He could have came to me and said he wanted to hit a lick or something. I'd have set him up a lick. I'd have showed him how to hit a lick or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm his pops. You know what I'm saying? I'm from the streets. The lick, yeah. I, lick I'd have set you a weird. I told you to go do that. They wouldn't be able to call the police. Yeah. 
Now, see, I, I would have thought that your reaction would be a little different. I would have thought that you would have been hurt because you didn't want him to be in the game at all. Because you, you know, because you had already took all the risk. You've taken all the chances that are already. So, and you know what comes with that game. You know, like, like yeah. you really know what come with the game. You know, the end game is always the penitentiary or death. Dead, you always. Know? That's the end game. So, I would have thought you would have been like, "Yo, I need to make sure that I protect my boy from this," because I know that that's how I deal. That is a form of that's protecting. how I deal with my son. Let me show you something. Just a form of protecting, too, but they got it's a, it's a flip side of that coin. Mm -hmm. Now, if your son, you know your son want to do something wrong, I don't care what it is wrong, mm -hmm. whatever it is, and you got knowledge of it, and it's best for him to get the knowledge from you, for him, for you to tell him what he finna, what he finna get, get into, the good, the bad, the pros and cons about it, for he got the information from you instead of going and get it from somebody else that probably not tell him everything right. Yeah, That's that, how my daddy did me. Yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right. You're, you're absolutely right, you know, by saying it the way you just said it. But my point is that that's a last result. Yeah. My first thing is to talk him out of it. Yeah. My first thing is to say, son, you know, what, what, yeah. that, this ain't what you want. Yeah. And, and explain to him what the consequences are. Because I know for a fact, like you know, that quick money, you ain't going to—it's very hard to stop making quick money when you know, man, I can, shit, I just made, you know, $50,000 this week. Why would I go out, you know, d just just moving something yeah. around or making a call or whatever? I just made $50,000. Why would I go out and, you know, work my fingers to the bone for $50,000 for a year or for a month? You know what I'm saying? When I can do it in a day mm -hmm. or a week. Why would I do that? I'm going to go back to what I know to get the... Get, I, I'm gonna make money. the money the fastest way I can, just like anybody else that has a hustle that's maybe legal. Whoever's making a legal hustle right now, there I'm pretty sure that they're pursuing whatever they're making the fastest money at, the most, the most money and the fastest money. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what they're doing. Yeah. That's their number one thing, right? Yeah. So we know that that's what they're gonna go back to. You're gonna keep going back to that until you get something better, and. When it come to these streets, you know, I remember this girl came to me once and she asked me, what, what did she, what should I do? You know, do one another to take some, some work. Mm -hmm. And I gave it a good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, laid it right out to her. You know, all of, you know, you know what come with that conversation. And shit, she hit me up about a month later. And I came to visit her, and she she raised up a pants leg, and there's an ankle monitor. Damn. And I and she has a child. She had a child, and I and I asked her, you know, well, what happened? And she said, the first time she went out there and tried it, it worked. The second time she went with her girl, and both of them got popped. And now she has a fed case that she's fighting, mm. and she can't have a baby. They took her baby away from her. Wow. And she ain't got the money, and she got to get more money and borrow more money to help fight her case. And she still ended up doing time. And no money, you know, and had to start all over. And that is the case 99.9% .9 of the time. The only way you really going to be able to be a dope dealer in the United States is to work for the United States. Pretty much. Government. You yeah. got to work for the government yeah. to be a dope dealer yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and retire. You know, you got to work for the government. You know, you got to be a cop or something. You got to yeah. be on the inside of the law. You got to be on the inside of the law mm. to be able to get away with it. Everybody else going down. Yeah. Everybody else going down. You know, I was put in the game by my dad. Yeah? Yeah. My dad showed me how to cook how to weigh it up, how to be, how to sell it, what to do, the pros and cons about it. You know, his main thing was to last, not to flash. Mm -hmm. He always made sure that when I had some money, I was able to invest it in something to make it seem like I got some over here paying for this over here and not just drug money. Right. Yeah. You know, normally people, parents don't put them in the game like that. My dad just put me directly in the game. If I say directly in the game, in the game. My dad was a merchant seaman. So he used to bring all that, all that from the Far East, 
Colombian stuff, he brought it back over well, here. Well, damn. I be damn. Yeah. And when he brought it back, he had to go meet the people and give it to them. And guess who he introduced? Wow. Me. Wow. So this is how I was able to get connect. Wow. And they didn't know how to cook. Since my dad had taught me how to cook, I had to cook it for them to, so they can see how good it was. Wow. <laughs> this is how I got introduced to the game, Willie. Really. So how, at, at your dad's height, how, how much do you think he was moving? I don't know how many he was bringing back from over, over, overseas for yeah. him. I just know every time he go to Far East or go somewhere, he always come back. He got to go into he got a big old duff bag. He got to go take it to these people, meet them, and get the, give, give the smile over here. They load up on the ship. He bring it back over here and deliver where it need to go. That's all he did. Man, this sound damn this sound like some Denzel Washington American gangster stuff. But that what my dad was doing. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then as 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 they they youngsters was growing up, I was growing up, so we started hanging, knowing each other. So when they started getting all the work, I'm I'm buying the work. They were giving it to me. So it's just like, there you go. I gotta connect through my dad from overseas, cause he bring it to the people over here. So when your dad is teaching you how to count it, weigh it, cook it, move it, <laughs> what kind of, you know, what's your mother's reaction to all of this? Like, wh- how how is she, how, what she is she coming to tell play? us to be careful, and, and she was behind her, her husband. No matter what. See, they played in the band. They traveled doing music and stuff. They did all that, but my dad was a hustler. You know, he was a hustler, and that's what he done. You know, he was an emergent seaman, hustler, good father, caring, knowledgeable. He was a teacher. They used to call him rabbi. So he he's a teacher. Mm-hmm. So he taught us about the game. Because like I was just telling you, he said, man, I don't want you to go shoot dice. You want to shoot dice, I'm going to take you to somebody to let them show you how to shoot dice, how to pad roll, how to practice and everything. You want you, you want to be a jacker? I'm going to take you over here and show you somebody I know I trust. They're going to talk to you about being a jacker. I'm not gonna let you just go and talk to anybody about doing anything wrong. Now, what I do need, what I do need you to do is go to school and get a little, a little book sense, all right? Cause you got a lot of common sense. I'm gonna make sure I put some street sense in you, and you have a lot of sense. That was his whole thing to get some book sense. You ain't gotta be the smartest one in the class. Just listen, so absorb some of it. Your your your, your common sense that I read up here, Troy. You got good common sense. I'm gonna teach you street sense. And you have a lot of sense. You'll be able, you'll be able to go sit in anybody's room, anywhere, and talk to anybody about anything. Cause your common sense is gonna kick in when your your, your book sense ain't got it. Ain't ain't, ain't on their level what they talking about. But your common sense will be able to just to hold a conversation. And your street sense is gonna know when they bullshitting you. Now, did your dad end up in jail? Nope. My dad never been in prison. Not once. He's nope. still alive? No, my dad been passed long. When I when? when I when I uh hit with wanna be a baller. A couple of years after, about three years after that, he passed away. Okay, so at least he, he got to he see got it. chance to see, he got, to see it. he got chance to see me being successful at what he uh, from one of his creations. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My my mom, Lou Rawls, tried to hire my mom to go on the road with him. Mm-hmm. Lou Rawls came to my mama's show one night and heard us singing. This before I was born, and uh, he said, "Hey, I need you to come and roll with me. I want to cut a record with you." See, so the next morning he came called came to the house. My dad, and my mom came to the house. Asked her to go on the road with him, and, he, and my mom said, well, my husband got to go, too. He said, well, man, Mr. J, I don't need another saxophone player. I just need your wife. And mama said, if he can't go, I can't go. And so that was their chance to cut a record, and though they never got a chance to cut one. Mm-hmm. And if they would have went on the road, I wouldn't have been here. Mm. What was life like on the road for you? Did you get a chance to tour Want to Be a Baller? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I came out of jail. I, I toured around a little bit. I didn't get the great big, big tours. I got a couple of them. I went on no major tours. I just had a lot of big, major shows. Mm-hmm. So I ain't never get a chance to go on a, a, just say, I'm going on the road, just me, the other boys, whoever else, whoever else, and we all together yeah, right. going out together. Right. I didn't do it like that. I had spot dates with a lot of big artists everywhere. Yeah, like who? Uh, Puffy, Alicia Iglesias. Uh, cash Money, them all the time. We always met up Cash Money, them somewhere I'm doing shows. Uh, Eminem. Let me tell you a story about Eminem. I like Eminem. I was, we, it, was, it was in Miami, Miami Arena. They, we all had limos and, and everything, so we had to go, go did our show at, at Miami Arena. Took us to the club. Everybody had their own limo. 
I got a big old section called my song Hot Down in Miami at the time. Hot, hot, hot. You know this a long time ago because we don't even do limos anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, yeah. right? So yeah. the people came in. Eminem came in. So they had him over in a little section over here. And so, but nobody wasn't paying no attention. He wasn't hot yet. He came back, went outside, they came and asked me, because my limo, I had my limo to stay there just in case I need to leave. Don't take my limo. They were taking everybody else's limos, going back, pick people up, bringing them back and forth to the club, right? I said, leave mine right there. I might need to leave all of a sudden. But I got enough clout, they got to do what I asked them to do. Eminem came out. They came and said, Troy, man, Eminem want to go back to the hotel room, man, but they ain't got a limo. Either. Can they use your limo? No, you can't use my limo. I need my limo to stay right there. And next thing you know, three, four months later, Eminem, biggest life. I wish I'd have came out and shook his head and talked to him, let him have my, my you know, my, my limo and go and go back to the hotel room. He don't remember me or something, right? Man, yeah. I've been so blessed that he ain't never dissed me. But he gonna he, he, he now, I got He'll diss you on one line on a on a hit song. He don't make a song about you. He'll just diss you on a hit song on one line. I, I say, man, when I heard him come out, I said, man, I should have got cool with that white boy. Man, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Because he blew up right after that. You know, so <laughs> I got a similar story. I got a similar story. A, a couple of similar stories, but in reverse, whereas, you know, somebody wanted to use my, lim my, my, my limo, but I, <laughs> and I let him. You know, mm -hmm. like, I allowed them. Well, actually, we rode together. Like, uh, I remember Eddie Griffin, uh, uh, wanted to ride, you know, he, he needed a ride, so he jumped into my limo and we went to the, uh, what was that? It was one of those award shows. I think it was VH1. VH1, VH1 Hip Hop Awards or something like that. And uh, uh, maybe a couple of years later, you know, you would think somebody would, re you know, yeah, remember and be yeah. cool, yeah? So a couple of years later, I went to go uh, holler at him, right? He was he had a show at the Improv, actually here at the Improv. And uh, he sent the message back that he wasn't seeing anybody. I'm like, okay. You, they told me it was you? Yeah. It's like, okay. But, you know, I don't know what dude might have been going through or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I try not to put my feelings into the shit, man, because you never know what's going on with people. Yeah. And, you know, but... At the very least, I do know that, you know, like uh, one of the things that I would, I always roll out the red carpet when I, when, when people come into town, you know, uh, or like when I have a show, ghetto mm -hmm. boys got something going on, we always extend that 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 offer, like yo, if they come in here, woo -woo, once we find out, oh, artists, it's a camaraderie, right? It's an automatic camaraderie with artists in celebrities, period. Like, oh, yeah? Because we kind of appreciate that another celebrity would take their time to come, to to your come show. mess with us, right? Yeah. So we roll out the carpet for them. So, you know, I'm not going to go, I don't want try to try to try to do too much speculation or whatever. I just know that dude was like, I ain't seeing nobody right now, <laughs> you know? So sometimes it backfires even when you are kind. Yeah. But I think, you know, I know a lot of people, uh, well, I ain't going to say a lot of people, but because a whole lot of people do like Eminem, you know, obviously for the record sales. Yeah. Know, but some people don't cut for him at all. But I've never heard anybody say anything bad about Eminem. That's why I wanted to know mm. where your story was going. Because yeah. I've never heard anybody say anything he, bad like, Eminem did, did this, he messed over me, he, he did, did this he or whatever. Do, he didn't do that. Yeah. I didn't give right. him my limo courtesy call. I'm like, I'm hot. Yeah. I don't know who this white boy is at the time. At the right. time, it's a black, it's a black culture thing. You know what I'm saying? But he came over, he came in and and, and, and made his way with this shit. But I wish I'd have let him use my limo. I probably had an ally. You know, they hey man, M M, what's up, little Troy? Hey, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just saying. Yeah. But it might have backfired. And, but here's a, but here's a, here's another thing too, man. People do right. You know, sometimes management be telling you, nah. Mm -hmm. He ain't doing it, woo, woo, woo. and you be thinking it's the artist, you know. Sometimes I'm yeah, not saying that's yeah. what happened with that, my case, that but sometimes it'd be the management saying sure certain do. things, you know. And because a lot of times management don't want to move unless they're getting paid. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do nothing, nothing. Yeah. unless they're getting paid, you know. So you ask, uh, you know, you ask the artist or something to come on your podcast. If you're going through management, they're like, oh, you know, yeah, we usually charge 25000 for stuff like that, you know. But, you know, artist to artist, man, you know, it's a privilege, it's an honor for to sit down, you know, you know, with, with your, 
uh, with your colleagues, yeah. basically. Yeah. I couldn't doubt you called me and when you asked me to come be on your, your podcast and I say, man, uh, I need this, man. I need this. I need that. I need this amount of dollars from you. Well, I, 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 I wouldn't feel, I couldn't do that to you because, man, you have a, a genuine conversation about life and we respect each other as men. Yeah. And then I got to give you probably you wrote some songs for me. Because <laughs> I don't write songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, ain't about to write a ghostwriter. Well, we didn't deal with my ghostwriter and shit. He wrote some shit for me. Fuck it, I, I, I didn't care. I don't, I'm not a writer. I'm not a writer. I'm not. I'm not. A writer. I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a rapper. You're a businessman. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a businessman. That's it. <laughs> a, a business. That's it. Yeah. Man, have you spoken to Young Star lately? I ain't seen him in maybe two, three years. I think I seen him about yeah. two years ago. I seen him. Y'all on good terms? Yeah, yeah. All right. They, they um. They uh uh he raising them dogs at one while. I know that what he was doing, raise those those pits or bullies or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I don't man, if if it's about music, I go do shows for a couple people I know. Other than that, I'm not in the music industry. I don't want I don't listen to nobody rap tapes, they CDs. I don't listen, don't don't ask me for my advice. I don't have none. <laughs> I don't have none. <laughs> You ain't got no advice for No, I ain't got no connections or nothing. <laughs> and they be like, for real, Troy, you done? Man, I'm done, man. I gave it up. I yeah. gave it up. And it stopped, I stopped having fun when I stopped smoking weed. You know what I'm saying? When I stopped smoking weed, and I can't sit there and smoke weed and, and have fun and do music, it's like I lost the love for it at the same time. Uh, so what do you do for fun now? Smoke a cigar, hang my wife, chocolate. Yeah. Go out with my friends and sit back, have a couple of drinks. That's it. The Travel. Kid. The kids don't try to warn you by smoking cigars? No. Nah. Yeah. No. Nah. <laughs> Leave me alone, cause I go back and start smoking weed. <laughs> yeah, but I don't do any of that no more, man. And it's like I found myself flying, dreading to get on the plane to go make some money, go do the show. Girls want to come back to the hotel room with me. I go back to the room by myself, roll me some weed up, smoke by myself in the room, call one of my girls back home and talk to them. So that means it's time to give it up. Why were you dreading to go on stage? No, call, and get money, I big got, money, easy money. I got money. tired of it. It ran its course. I, I got tired of doing it. It was like I'm not having fun with this no more. I got to do something else. Yeah, I stopped having fun with it. I almost knocking no girls off on the road. No, I stopped knocking off them three, four girls a night at the room and in the back backstage. And I stopped doing everything. Now, let me ask you something. Uh, when you stopped knocking the girls off, I mean, did you? Go to therapy. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I just, it's just like, I'm like, I'm tired of this. I don't feel like doing this to no more right now. I got tired of it, man. My life, I actually got tired. I mean, people don't understand. Me, I'm like, I get tired of something, and I don't, that ain't what I want to do no more. I don't give a, what is it, making money and whatever. I don't want to do that no more. Yeah. I'm going to do something else. Because yeah. I can either go get back in the music uh, and do some part in the music industry and make money from it. It's something that somebody gonna want me to do for them to make money, mm-hmm. and it'd be easy to me because it's second nature. Music is second nature to me, but I don't have fun doing it. Mm. If you ain't having fun, time to do something that's different. Right. What's next? Well, I'm <clears throat> glad you asked. I got my certification as a motivator speaker and a life coach. Okay. I only got my certification for that. Uh, I got a program. I'm going to start reaching out back to the youth, the young the young teenagers, uh, called Start. Start taking another route today. That's what it means. Start taking another route today. I don't care what happened yesterday. You walk down on the left side of the street down there, and guy was sitting up shooting dice, drinking beers and falters. Tomorrow, take another route. Go, to, go on the other side of the street. You got choices mm-hmm. that you can make every single day. And when you wake up, you can take another route. And I want to speak to the young, youngsters and show them that they can take another route. They ain't got to just listen to all this stuff that's on TV, on videos, and they got and that's the only formula that it is. No, you got your own mind. You can speak your own mind and you can take your own path, make your own path. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I want to go and speak to a lot of the youngsters. Uh, I felt that I fucked up the community back in the day, so now I want to try to help the community a little more. You know, I... I I started back in the day when I did the program called Real Ballers Don't Do Drugs. I was one of the first, I don't know if you know, you got another history lesson. I was the first rapper in H-Town to get a proclamation for, for uh, the key to the city. Mm. 
They weren't giving keys to the city before I got one. Shit, they pass the shit out like hotcakes now. Yeah, they, they, they just give them away. <laughs> but I was the first one to get... You, you say you a rapper? Here, hey, take that proclamation. Here go your key. Where you from? <laughs> I'm from Shreveport, Louisiana, and I'm on my way. Well, come get a proclamation. Yeah, they just give away <laughs> now. Look, Mayor Lee Brown, right? You remember Mayor Lee Brown? Yeah, yeah. He was the drug czar at first. Yeah. He was the chase me. Then became mayor, he had to shake my hand on City Hall and give me a proclamation. Mm. That's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's full up. circle there. Full circle, man. Full circle. Do, so. do you ever feel like a hypocrite when you this uh when you um go out and speak to kids or whatever? Let, let me back up. Let me, let me put it like this. Did you feel like a hypocrite before you started speaking to the youth? Uh, considering your background of having been in the streets and having, you know, deal with drugs? I did about smoking weed because I had never stopped smoking weed and I was speaking to the kids and sometimes before I go speak to the kids, I don't smoke the joint. So I feel bad. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, man, I'm, like, I'm, I'm letting these kids down. I'm, I'm doing this here, but I'm telling them to do something else. Even though our parents always have told us, don't do as I do, do as I say. That's just what they always said. But if you really want to be righteous, you need to be righteous and speak speak it to the kids. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So right now, I think I got myself more on a, a more righteous path that I can go and speak to the 18, 19, 21-year-olds and stuff and help them become entrepreneurs or whatever they want to do. You know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't going to be successful in going to college. That everybody, it, it college ain't for everybody. So maybe, maybe it's another route you can take to be just as successful. You know, when I was working in the plants, everybody was tripping because I, I, I was working in, um, in the oil and gas plants, right? Did that almost 14 years. But I was making 40 something dollars an hour. I went to school for five weeks, four hours a day, and got my certification. How old were you? That was for my father's, unless I'm not doing music. Oh, you talking about you talking about recent? I thought you I thought you were saying you had went to school. When I you, did. I went to school when for you, five weeks. No, I thought you were saying you went to school like when you was back in school, like as a kid, a youngster, uh-uh. and making forty dollars. No, this I was, was like what? This was okay. When I stopped doing music, I went and, and got my certification as a safety safety man, right? Okay. And I'm making anywhere less. I I I paid the job up at thirty two dollars an hour. Mm-hmm. But I went to school for five weeks, four hours a day, and I made more money than if somebody that had a, a, a degree. I ask you about the hypocritical thing because there's there's a lot of guys who have a past, right? You know, where they were in the streets, uh, myself included. You know, I ain't, I definitely have not been an angel, and uh, so at one point I remember saying to myself, well, I don't want to say anything that if I see a youngster doing something crazy, I don't want to speak on it because if I speak on it, they're going to try to call me out and say, well, you did this and you did that and you did this and you did that. And I I want to let all you, everybody out there know, and women too, you know, your past don't define you. It refines you. you. And so... Once I figured that piece out, I was like, you know, anybody that try to throw your past in your face, they don't count no way. They're not for you anyway. They don't even matter. So fuck them. Mm. It ain't about them. Fuck what they got to say. They going to say something negative about everybody. They say something bad about their own mama and their kids and sisters, brothers, whoever. They ain't shit. They really ain't shit. Fuck them. Reach those kids. Put that information out there. If you got Appreciate that it. information, especially if you've you know done something to bring harm to the community, make make amends make by, right. by by yeah, yeah, make amends, make it right, man. Go out there and put that information out there and try to help as many people as you can. And helping one person ain't enough because too much is given, much is required. Yeah, and so. Put that information out there, man. Keep on going. Keep on going. Appreciate uh, I appreciate what you're doing, man. Um, I, I see you. I, I don't know where the hell you're going to end up at because every time I turn around, <laughs> you got something else going on. You got something major going on. You stay getting to the money, and that's another testament of you know not being a one-trick pony. Like, you don't... 
from the outside looking in, I say you don't need the money because I just saw them checks that you got right there. <laughs> and But you still got three or four businesses going on. Yeah. And you still working for somebody else. You, I mean, you got a side hustle where you work for somebody else getting 40 bucks an hour. Yeah. Some people may not be able to humble themselves like that. People that's been to the top of the mountain with yeah. the financial mountain may not be, be they may not be all right with humbling themselves yeah. to make forty dollars an hour to work for somebody else, especially when you got other people that work there that may see you and be like, "Yo, let's try. Let me get let me get a picture, man. Let me let me they, let me." They do. They get on my life about a picture. You got someone be happy to see me out there, right? Then you got the other half. Oh, he must be broke. That's why he out here, right? And I'd be like, "Yeah, I'm broke. I don't mind. Just go look at my driveway if you want to, or you know, not." I don't care. This is something that God blessed me to be able to go and get a fuck, go get this certification that I can make this kind of money without a college degree and being in prison. See, I done been in prison and I can make that kind of money? Say, man, I ain't care what nobody said. I go get that money. I mean, I mean, one day my, I had my, my, my son, you always be tripping me about t- my titularity, my, my one that do comedy, right? Dad, man, I want you going to work, man. I, I'm getting up, going to work. He just coming in. I'm going to work. Got me a, a, a plate and everything. He's, man, I used to see my dad go to work. My dad never went to work, man. My dad just live on fat of the land, man. Dad, I sit you up some shows, man. I'm tired of you going to work. You know what I'm saying? He didn't want me to go to the plant. So I think the next couple of days, I came home. I got a paper check. That was, I think, our first check or something I had on the counter. He came in and looked at my check. He said, Dad, <laughs> this your check? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's for, but that's for two weeks, though. Dad, that's almost $7,000. I said, yeah, they saw the shot. I hate it. He was tripping. Because <laughs> I'm making three, dollars $4,000 a week. I got some jobs I go on, I get paid double time. My check's 6500 a week. I bring home one week, and I don't turn out one boat. I don't pick up not one piece of paper. I don't drive up. No equipment to do anything but walk around and talk to people. Man, who, who, where did you learn, where did you get this sense of self from, like, and this, this sense of worth? You know, because your worth is not tied. To, you like fancy things. I mean, you wrote the, one of the biggest money songs ever. You know, I mean, you, you put out one of the biggest money songs ever, Want to Be a Baller. So obviously you like, you like nice things, yeah. but nice things don't define you. How in the hell did you strike that balance? Where did that come from? Like, did you, did you watch somebody else do it? Did somebody my have dad, these conversations with dad, you? My dad, he, he had me grounded the whole time. He, that was his whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Staying, staying grounded. You know what I'm saying? Don't let, because you got this and they don't have that make you think you're bigger than that person, all right? Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he used to always say, it's better than I've had than lost and never had at all. So if you can have it and you lose it, it's still, I done had it, so okay, I get it again. I get something else again. That's how I look at life. That's how I look at everything. Man, I done, I done been up and down, really. Up and down, up and down, up and down. But mainly I've been up. And I feel great about myself when I don't have nothing. I don't worry about it. But, you know, I just still be the same little Troy. I stay focused. I stay grounded. Because the time's going to turn. The table's going to turn again. You just make your plan. I tell it, I tell my sons, do what I teach y'all today and start implementing it today. Don't wait till six months later down the line and start doing what I'm telling you to do because somebody's going to be done caught up with you. See, I'm going to teach you some stuff. That gonna, you're going to be ahead of the game. Right now, if I start, if I give you some advice, use it today. Start using it today. Don't wait six months or years to start using it because somebody's going to got that game that I'm just telling you, and they're going to gonna pass you up. If you use what I teach you today, you'll be ahead tomorrow. Not tomorrow as you lay down and go to sleep, but tomorrow as in time. You'll mm-hmm. be ahead. Man, that's that's a hell of a note to end on right there, man. I appreciate you giving me some of that time, man. <laughs> and, and more importantly, that game, bro, important that knowledge that you have, man. And please, bro, write that book. Yeah. Do that movie. Write your own book. Mm-hmm. Tell your own I'm story. Sorry. I don't even want to hear some. I promise you, bro, if somebody, if I hear somebody else telling your story, I'm going to be mad. Okay. Like, you know, if I'm going to be mad because I know they're going to miss something. You know what, Willie? I'm gonna take you up on that. I'm gonna start thinking about putting it, put it together. 
I got a lot of people that came to me about it. I mean, they don't came to me about making a reality show. I, I don't want to live my life on no reality TV or nothing. I don't want my life out like that. I don't want to put everything I do on 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 on, in, on Instagram, on social media. I don't put everything I be doing got going on on, on social media. I don't care. Everybody don't know. But they, like you say, they do need to know my side of my story and my life mm -hmm. from my eyesight, not from somebody else telling it from a third person. Yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Lil Troy. Thank you, Mr. Willie. What, one more question. <laughs> uh, being that you are a seasoned young man, are you, are you going to drop the L? Have you ever felt any urge to drop the, L, the Lil from from Troy, I have. So it's just Troy now. Yeah, see, so uh, on, on all everything I do now is Berklet, Berklet cares, Berklet trucking, Troy. You know, then everything is now. I don't, I don't just use little Troy like a fan or something. Yeah, but normally I just say, hey, hey, I'm Troy. How you doing? What What about when there's an opportunity to work in the, the capacity of an artist? I don't want to do no music with an artist. Now, I'm talking about as an artist. I mean, you, if you go out and somebody want to say, hey, Troy, Troy, can you come and perform? I got to know you know you you know, for me to perform. Just because you got some money you want me to come perform, I still say no. Yeah. If I know you know you and I did show with you before a long time ago, me and you all right, all right, I do your show. Just because you got a, somebody, hey, Troy, man, I got this big show coming up. I want you to do it, man. I'm going to pay you this. Nah, man, I'm going to be busy. I got something to do. I don't want to go get the money. What if the Grammys called you? I'm going to tell them, fuck the Grammys like Willie D did. <laughs> <laughs> no more talk. No more talk. Yeah. <laughs>